So church, I want to ask you a question. Do you still believe? Oh, don't fool me now. Do you still believe? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me get to the scripture. Get my glasses again. Y'all bear with me. I'm excited. We're going to get it going here. As we read the scripture, I need you to pay very close attention to the words that are here. Again, God's word is true. It said, heaven and earth would pass away, but the word of God will stand forever. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, then we're going to jump down to verse 18 and 19. Listen closely. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle, the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses barely was faithful in all his house as a servant, for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you hear his voice, i say that again, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation in the days of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my work for four years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts and have not known my ways. So I swear in my rap, rap that they should not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Drop down to verse 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Because of what? Move over to chapter 9 of Mark. Just two verses. You all can read it with me. You there? Verse 23 and 24. You there? Let's read it together. Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to them that what? Believe. And straightway the father of the child cried and said with tears. Say it. Somebody read it. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. So, quest, so the question is, church, do you still believe? Do you still believe? It's an important question today. It's an important question in a post-modern society. Do you still believe? It's an important question in a post-pandemic season. Do you still believe? It's an important question in a culture that is challenging and counseling or trying to counsel your very thoughts. Do you still believe? It's a highly important question. When you look around, you see churches half empty. When you see the apostasy, it's in full effect. The great falling away is in full effect right now. Do you still believe? Do you still believe is the question for the believer today. When you have more believers depending on post-pandemic relief than the perpetual promises of God. Do you still believe that, that God will supply all your needs? Do you still believe that? Do you still believe that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you? In, Mark, in, in Romans, if I got that up, uh, Elijah, Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 14, Paul asked a profound question. He asked a profound, he had three profound questions, and, 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 and well, he made a profound statement 
And he backs us up with three questions. A profound statement. Now, the questions are not psychological questions. They, they're not philosophical questions. They're not mysterious questions. But they stand as fundamental questions to the entire human race, especially to the evangelists. And here's a statement. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise. That's not that's, that's a promise. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him, he'll save you. It's a promise. But here's the question. Verse 14 says, How then should they call on him in whom they have what? Not believed. Mm. And how should they believe on him whom they have not heard? And it goes, and how should they hear without a preacher? But it comes from Paul's heart desire. He says up in Romans chapter 10, verse 1, he says this, he said, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, not according to belief. For they've been ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That sounds like America to me. Don't that sound like America today? But here it is. It says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to what? To everyone that what? Believes. Christ is the end of righteousness to everyone that believes. So what it's saying, it's saying from, from Abraham to Moses to Joshua, through 40 years in the wilderness, through kings and prophets, and, 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 and even today, some of Israel still don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Still don't believe, even today. But, but look at your own family. Look at your own life. You've been a pistol in your own home. You've been a witness to your friends. Some of your friends still don't believe that Jesus is real. But do you still believe? After all you've been through, do you still believe? So in our text, we see, we see something that we never thought of. Hebrews tell us several things about the unbeliever. One is tell us that the unbeliever would never experience the rest of God. The unbeliever would never experience the rest of God. Then it tells us that the heart of the unbeliever is more than desperately wicked, but it's an evil heart. Evil heart. So I want to look at quickly as possible four things. I want to look at the pressure of believing, the promise and privilege to those that believe. Then we'll get to the penalty for not believing, then the pleasure of believing. Are you ready for it? You really want to hear this message? Hallelujah. So the meaning of believe that from, from, from Webster Dictionary says, believe me to accept something as true, to feel assured. But Nelson Bible Dictionary says this, it defines faith as a belief or a, cons or a confident attitude towards God. It involves commitment to him, to his will for, for one's life. Nelson Bible also says that belief is to place one trust in God's truth. A person who believes and one who person who believes is one who takes God at his word and trusts in his salvation. And God's truth is who? God's truth is what? God's truth is Jesus Christ. Do you still believe? Hallelujah. So let me give you the pressure of believing. It's telling us in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, tell us that our belief must be focused and centered on Jesus. Our beliefs must be focused and centered on Jesus. And this is where the pressure began. This is where the pressure began. It began because you got to take the leap of belief, not the leap of faith. The leap of belief comes before the leap of faith. I'm going to show you in a minute. But faith comes along and strengthens your belief. So the pressure of believing, the pressure of believing is Jesus who he said he is. That's the pressure of believing that. The pressure of believing that, that, that Jesus can do what you need him to do to save you. The pressure of believing that Jesus can be your all in all, that he can be your sustainer and your supplier. That's the, the pressure of believing is that Jesus is the truth. The pressure of believing. In the world, there no longer believe that there's absolute truth. Here stands Jesus. The resurrection, the truth, and the life. What's he going to do with that? In the, pressure, in the world that don't believe that's absolute truth, here stands Jesus. Do you still believe? The pressure is on to believe that 
He who was once dead mm, is now alive. That's pressure. He who was once dead is now alive. Do you believe that? In a world that is full of ungodly people, a world that is full of antichrist, the pressure is on to believe. In a mean and a hateful world, the pressure is on to believe. The pressure is on to believe when death, is, death and sickness is all around you, the pressure is on to believe. The pressure is on to believe there's a loving God, a loving God full of grace, a loving God full of mercy, a loving God full of love, favor and loving kindness, but a loving God that is full of wrath. He can be a mean God, but a loving God. He's full of wrath. The pressure is on to believe. When you have prayed and prayed and you don't seem to get any relief, but things get worse, the pressure is on to believe. But do you still believe? The pressure is on to believe when you watch loved ones die and children suffering from terminal illness and hunger. Do you still believe? Pressure is on to believe when you see the guilty go free and the innocent is punished and in prison. The pressure is on to believe. The pressure is on to believe when you see the wicked prosper and the poor continue to scuffle and shuffle to make ends meet. The pressure is on to believe. The pressure is on to believe. Several things cause this pressure to believe. I'm going to give you the top three. The top three is time, sight, and fear would call pressure to believe. Time, sight, and fear would call pressure to believe. Time was, seen to, time was seen to make one stop believing in truth. Somehow you feel that God doesn't care. You feel that God has forgotten you. That what time will leave. Well, I have believed all my saved life, all my born again life, I believe that Jesus is coming back. I'll be turning 65 in August. He's not having come yet. But he's still coming. I still believe that he's coming. I still believe that. I stopped believing in Santa Claus. I stopped believing in the Easter Bunny. But I still believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. Hallelujah. I stopped believing in fairy tales and nursing rhyme. But Jesus is coming back. He's coming. He's coming. He said in the word, behold, I come quickly. Time will call pressure to believe. Sight. We make it hard to, for you to believe what you see or what you don't see make you wonder, does God really care or do he really exist? You remember Thomas. Thomas said, I won't believe until I put my hand in his side. You remember the man we just read about? The man said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. We're going to get back to that. We're going to unpack that in a minute. They based, he based his faith, his belief, and unbelief on what he saw. He saw his son being tormented, and the disciples could not deliver him. He knew about Jesus' miracles that Jesus had performed for others. Help my unbelief. We'll come back to that. Fear. Fear will hinder and pressure your ability to believe on Jesus. The fear of what others think about or may say about you for confessing Christ. The fear of what people may say for you, for you telling the truth, what thus saith the Lord. Your fear of that, what people would think about you. Peter said, I don't know the man. There were people I don't know the man. He was under pressure. Yeah, yeah. He was under pressure. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Hmm. Amen. The story told Pastor Mickey of this mega church. Got it going on. Big mega church. Got it going on. They dumped over pews. The preacher just preaching up a storm full of people. It says that mass gunmen come into the church with M16, AK-47. They didn't come to rob it. They just come and say, if you confess Jesus Christ, if, if you deny Jesus Christ, you can walk out of here with your life. And one by one, they start tipping out. Then two. Then others start tipping out. But they have to confess. They get to the door. Do you deny Jesus Christ? Say, yeah, I deny him. Until it dwindled down to a handful of people. Then the mask come and they took the mask off. They laid the guns down and say, Pastor, you can preach now. You can preach now, Pastor. The believers are here. The believers are here. You can preach now. The true believers are here. Do you still believe even under pressure? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. I got lost. Where I was at? I'm, I'm going to get it. There it is, right there. So he, Hebrews 3, 1 through 6, tell us why we need to believe on Jesus even under pressure. Hebrews chapter 3, 1 through 6, which we just read, even under pressure, there's why we still need to believe on Jesus. Because we are partakers of a heavenly calling, and we are set apart from the world. It tells us that Jesus is the apostle sent from God. That's why we need to believe on him. It says that Jesus is our high priest, he's an intercessor, who is faithful to, his, to the one who sent him and God sent him. It tells us that Jesus is higher than Moses. That Moses delivered Israel, but Jesus delivered the world. Unbelievers and, 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 uh, believers and unbelievers are saying he died for the world. Hmm. Verse 4 tells us that it's he that builds all things. He that builds all things, in him all things are made. And verse 6 tells us why we need to believe on Jesus at the center of our, of our belief that he, that we are partakers of his kingdom, partakers of his house. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So do you still believe? Do you still believe? Do you still believe even under pressure? So let me get to the promise and privilege of believing. So let me go back and unpack something that I said earlier. I said you must first take the leap of belief before you take the leap of faith. That faith comes along to strengthen your belief. If I had a chair up here, I, I could demonstrate it. When I see the chair, I have first believed that it's a sturdy chair. My faith is not in the chair. I just want to know it's a sturdy chair to hold this 220 pounds. <laughs> the same with Jesus. You must first believe that Jesus is who he say he is. Amen? That he's the son of God. Hallelujah. And you got to have the faith that, that he can do what you need him to do, hallelujah, coming along to, to save you, amen? For Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that come to, come to God must first believe that what? He is a reward to them that diligently, diligently seek him. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, gave the only begotten son that whosoever believe on him, believe on him, not have, necessarily whoever have faith in him, but whoever believe in him, believe come before faith, shall have everlasting Life. Amen? Amen. Ah, hallelujah. See, many people believe that Jesus existed, but they didn't believe that he was God with us. They didn't believe that he was Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah, I believe he exists, but he is God in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you ever thought, have you ever thought about the man say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief? The more you exercise your faith, strengthens your belief. You hear me? More you, and you might want to take notes. The more you exercise your faith, strengthens your belief. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the promise and the privilege of believing. Believing in Jesus will allow you to hear his voice, God's voice, and know his way. We see that in, in the text in verses 7 and 10. It says in the provocation of the days of the wilderness, you know, that, that, that they didn't know his ways. They didn't realize that. They said, harden not your heart. That, 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 that if you know Jesus, you will know his voice. You will hear his voice. Amen? Amen. You will hear his voice. And it says, no, they will not follow. Amen. So in the Old Testament, let, let, let me give you some, some witnesses for the promise and privilege of believing. You remember in the Old Testament, my friend Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, around verse 20. First of all, you know that Jehoshaphat, the mighty army is coming up against him. The mighty army is coming up against him. He called all the people together and have a fast and he said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are up on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the prophet come and tell him, Jehoshaphat, you need not fight in this battle. But he tells him something else. Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of, Jer of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. Belief. The promise and privilege of believing. Daniel, you remember Daniel? Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. King Darius, he put his back up against the wall. He didn't want to throw him in there, but he had to. And he, he walked the pace floor all night, wondering how Daniel was doing. He couldn't wait till morning. He get to morning, he go down to the pit. Daniel was just yawning, sleep, just waking up. <sighs> he said, Daniel, are you okay? Yeah, what, what he say? He said, O king, live forever. That's what he said. O king, live forever. Yes. My God has kept me yes. from the lions. Yes. 
but, but it's verse 23. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Do you still believe? John 1 and 1 12 say, but as many received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that what? Believe on his name. John 5, 24 say, Brother, brother, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life and should not come into condemnation, but be passed from death unto life. You believe that? You pass from death unto life. Let me bring on some more witnesses that exercise their faith, amen, and their promise of healing. Jairus' daughter, remember Jairus' daughter? Jairus' daughter's sick. There's Jesus. He said, Jesus, my daughter's sick, laid at the point of death. Jesus, Jesus said, let's go. They began to go. They remember the woman's issue of blood? Woman's issue of blood helped them up. He said, and he said if I can just touch yeah. his clothes. Yeah. Her belief wasn't in his clothes. Her belief was in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But meanwhile, they come and they tell Jairus, Jairus, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter is what? Dead. Dead. Mm. But I love the verse. The verse comes. Yeah. Jesus, hear it. Don't bother the master anymore, but your daughter is dead. And Jesus here, he says this. He said, be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. He goes to the house, he put all the dollars out, all the naysayers out, and he raises Jairus' daughter. Do you still believe? Let me give you one more. I got two more for you. The centurion soldier, they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, my, my servant is at the point of death. Can you, can, 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 you know, my servant at the point of death. So Jesus, Jesus said, let's go. The, the, the centurion said, no, no, Jesus, you ain't got to go. Just speak the word. He said, just, you ain't got to go. You're a man of authority. I'm a man. Just speak the word. This is what Jesus told him. Jesus said, Jesus said to the centurion, go thy way as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And this his servant was what? Healed in the self same hour. Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Let me bring two more witnesses, then, then, then we're going to move on. Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha. If you have been here, my brother would not have died. And that's what they said. Both of them said. But it's Martha. If you have been here, my brother would not have died. This was Jesus tell her. Jesus said unto her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that what? Believes in me. Though he was dead, shall live. Oh, man, that's good. He that believed in me, though he was dead, shall live. And he said, and whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Then he asked this, believe is thou that? <laughs> do you believe that? Do you, do you really believe that? That you will never die? Do you still believe? Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Hmm. The promise of your salvation is in your believing. You know that, right? Yeah. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, confession is made salvation. The promise of your mansion is in your believing, right? You say, Let not your heart be troubled, for in my Father's house are many mansions. Okay? You know, he said, Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God. Believe also in me, and you know the rest. So let's move to the promise and privileges. See, the promise and privilege of believing, no, here it is. The promise and privilege of believing give you access to Almighty God. You might want to write that down. The promise and privilege of believing give you access to God Almighty. Amen? So let's move to the penalty of not believing. The penalty of not believing. Not believing in God's word will leave you with a corrupted heart. You hear me? It will leave you with a corrupt heart. We're going to see it in the scripture. I just want to position myself because we're going to get ready to go to that Mark passage. Hallelujah. So not believing in God where it leave you with a corrupt heart because we see it in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8. You said they had a hardened heart. In verse 10, it said they have an error heart. Their heart still always error. In verse 3, when I read to that, that's what my, my priest on this message when I read verse 12. He said they have an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. 
So write this down. Believing must first start in the heart. Your belief must first start in the heart. If thou believe in your heart. In other words, the heart has to believe before the mind and head can receive. Let me say it again. The heart has to believe before the mind and head can receive. You got that? Yeah. Amen. Repeat it back to me. <laughs> it's important. The heart has to believe before the mind and head can receive. So let's go to the Mark chapter 9 passage. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Anytime somebody tell you Mark chapter 9, it should immediately take you to the Mount of Transfiguration. On the Mount of Transfiguration, you got Moses shows up, a glorious body. Elijah shows up in a glorious body. Jesus in the middle. You got the law and the prophet and grace in the middle. Yes. Hallelujah. And then the voice of God says, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. Yes. And Peter said, Lord, it's just good to be here. Can we stay here? But you can't stay on the mountain, guys. You got to go down in the valley sometime. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. I want you to listen to the conversation. Yes, so Jesus come off the mountain. He said, I'm going to go to my disciples. We're going to pick it up around verse 21. Get your Bible, Mark 29. I mean, Mark 9, verse 21. You listen to the conversation. He said, I'm going to go to my disciples. He get down there. He see a big ruckus. He see a big ruckus. They arguing with the disciples. They cussing the disciples out. They're, they're fussing. They're fighting. They don't tell all kinds of stuff going on. And Jesus see the, the, the scribes arguing with his disciples. He said, what's going on here? What's going on here? And then the father, with his weak voice, let's listen to the conversation. He says in verse 21, and he asked the father, now nah, let me see. I'm going to start verse 19. He answered, uh, anyway. He tells Jesus, I, I, brought, I, I brought my child to your disciples, and they cannot heal him. They cannot heal him. So let's start at verse 19. He asked and said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And he brought him unto him, and we saw him straight away. The spirit tarried him, and he fell to the ground, and he wallowed foam. And Jesus asked his father, how long, is, how long ago since is that come to him? How long ago since it came unto him? How long ago has since it come unto him? I want you to know that that Jesus, that, that question is not for Jesus. That question is for the Father. That question is for you. How long have you been wavering up and down with God? Since a child, I've been wavering up and down with God. As a teenager, I waver up and down with God. As a young adult, I, adult, I had one foot in the church and one foot in the street. How long has it been since you've been wavering, your faith been wavering? That's what the question is for. How long has it been? Stay with me now. Mm. How long has it been? As a teenager, I tried to believe, but, 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 but I got caught up in drugs. I, I'm going to run after the drugs. I'm not going to deal with the church. As a young adult, I, 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 I want to more so chase the women than to chase God. As an adult, I'm, I'm going to trust more in my money than I'm going to trust God. How long has it been since you've been up and down with God? That's what the question is about. Hmm. And then it says, he said, often time, again, they cast him into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But, li but listen to it, verse 22. Listen to it. Often time, he had cast him into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But... Listen to this. But, but if thou can do anything, have compassion, compassion on us and help us. If thou can do anything. And Jesus come back. But look, look what Jesus said. Jesus says, if thou can believe it, all things are possible to him that believes. Two big ifs. Two big ifs. Two big ifs. One if of uncertainty and doubt. Another if of assurance. I tell you now, don't come to Jesus with an if. He's Jesus. 
don't come to Jesus if you can do anything. If thou can believe it. That what the devil did. If thou be the son of God, turn these stones to bread. If thou be that, don't bring an if to Jesus. He's Jesus. If thou can do anything. If thou can believe it. Do you still believe? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 24. It says in straight at, at, let, me, let me see. And straight away the father of the child cried out. You got you gotta hear his pain too. You gotta hear his pain and his tears. Cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. I'm gonna tell you now, a half belief do not work with Jesus. A half belief do not work with Jesus. You gotta believe him all the way. Or not at all. You are lukewarm. Just like the church of Le uh, 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 said, I'd rather spill you out. A half belief doesn't work with Jesus. You're either all in or you're all out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. But let me help you out. Lord, I said, help my unbelief. The man was tired of being wishy-washy. The man was tired of being double-minded. Let not a double-minded man think he can receive anything of the Lord. The man was tired of being halted between two opinions. If God be God, let him be God. Amen? Amen. God be where is true and all men are lying. Halted between two opinions. The man was tired of getting his hopes up just to be let down again. Mm. I see your disciples. I see you healing, but your disciples cannot heal anybody. Hmm. He didn't want to develop an evil heart or unbelief. That's why I said, Lord, help my unbelief. He didn't want to develop an evil heart, an unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Hallelujah. Let me, let, let me give you this. You might want to write this down. Pastor, I'm trying to get us out here. Oh, y'all, y'all liking this? Y'all getting this? Can I preach? Can I, can I preach it? All right. Unbelief is demonic, progressive, and contagious. Unbelief is demonic, progressive, and contagious. I get it from the crowd. There are people in the crowd that seen Jesus, even the disciples, they seen Jesus' miracles. They know what Jesus can do. There, there, there are some don't believe now, 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 half of them don't believe now, all of them don't believe. It's progressive. And it's demonic. It's contagious. Why well, you got to watch out for rumors, got to watch out for this world. We in a world of, of, of full of uh, 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 unbelievers today. You know that, right? You're in a fake generation right now. Full of unbelievers. It's progressive. Demonic and it's contagious. Did Jesus really do that? Yeah, he did it. He's Jesus. Be careful. Hallelujah. Ah, so many believers. I'm believing the world today have faked the generation. But could it have been what the man believed in his heart conflicted with what he saw with his eyes? What well, he believed in his heart conflicted with what he saw with his eyes because he believed Jesus. He said, Master. He knew what Jesus was. But he, he saw his disciples couldn't do anything. Mm. What well, he believed could have been what, what, what the man believed in his heart conflicted with what he saw with his eyes. If thou can believe, that's what Jesus told him. He believed that Jesus was who he said, what can call him master. But what he saw with his eyes hindered him from receiving the fullness of the master's touch. Hallelujah. If thou can believe. If thou can believe. I, I, I know you've been through a lot, but if thou can believe. I know the sickness looked like a defeat. The torment has been prevailing a long time, but if thou can believe. If thou can believe, all things are possible to those that believe. I know it's looking impossible. I know the disciples tried, the doctor tried, the pop, the palm readers tried, the sorcery tried, witchcraft, you tried witchcraft, your money only went so far. But if thou can believe, if thou can believe, all things are possible. Amen. But if thou can believe, if you can push past the doubt. If you can look beyond the past failures and the setback, if you can get past the minutiae, the he say, she say, the nature, the thousands and the naysayers. Uh, don't let what you see with your eye dictate what you believe in your heart. 
Might want to write that down. Don't let what you see with your eyes dictate what you believe in your heart. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Mm. Hallelujah. You, you, you hear people say, I can't believe my eyes. You, you hear them say, I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it from my, my own eyes. But when it comes to God, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the supernatural, the heart must supersede the eyes. When it comes to Jesus. When it comes to the supernatural, when it comes to God, the heart must override the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. But here it go, here it go. Jesus not only cast out the demons out the boy, but he cast out the man's unbelieving spirit. You don't see it, do you? It's in there. I know you don't see it, but it's there. That man was bound for years with a spirit of, of, of doubt and fear. You've been bound for years with a spirit of doubt and fear. It abounded you. But Jesus cast it out. It says in verse 25. I'm going to show it to you. It said, when Jesus saw the people running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him. But he don't stop there like he did with the pigs and the swine. Remember that one? He said they wanted to, the, 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 the demonic man, the, 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 the demons wanted to go into the pig. He said, I don't care where you go, just go. But this time, he go, he says, come out of him, enter him no more. Other words, it's done. The unbelief is going to go away. Other words, devil, you're not welcome here anymore. Because you know when a demon leaves, a demon will come back. But he said, do not enter no more. Amen. He cast out the man's unbelieving spirit as well. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that tells me that right there. Jesus permanently removed the doubt and fear. Jesus don't do anything halfway. In this world, you see hopelessness. But I believe and know in my heart that there is hope and Jesus is that hope. Amen? Amen. Let me just jump on down to the penalty of unbelief. Try to get to the pledge that gets us on down the road. Mm. It says the penalty of unbelief that you will never experience the rest of God. The rest of God is the peace of God. The rest of God, you, you, do you remember the promised land that Moses we're taking the people to the promised land. And there's a sad verse in Numbers chapter 20, verse 12. Very sad verse. You remember Moses? Of all the things that Moses did, all the things that Moses did for the people to deliver the people, it says he could not go in the promised land. You know why? Because it says, it says it right here. It says in verse 12, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me. That when he struck the rock, when he struck the rock, uh, uh, other words, here's the deal. Don't be equally, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Moses was yoked with those people to the point that he got, he got on the people, the people got on his nerve. And he struck the walk, rock instead of speaking to the rock and missed his promised land. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Hallelujah. The, um, the penalty of unbelief that it says in Titus 1.15, nothing is pure, even the mind and conscience is defiled for when you're an unbeliever. The penalty for unbelief is that unbelievers will have their, Revelation 21, will have their way in the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Let me just go ahead and give you one, one uh, witness for unbelief. You remember Zechariah? Zachariah, you're going to, Elizabeth going to be pregnant. Elizabeth going to have a child. You're going to call him John. But he said he didn't believe, and God struck him down. Amen. That's the principle of unbelief. Let me give you the pledge, and I believe that we're going to get ready to go. The pledge is unbelief. One, the pledge of unbelief is the rest of God, that you experience the rest of God. Pastor preached on, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the pleasure of believing. The pleasure of believing is that the rewards of Christ. Jesus said, I come quickly and my rewards is in my hand. That's the pleasure. The pleasure, um, the pleasure for believing that you will see Christ. 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Though it yet not appear what we may be, but when we see him, we shall be like him. Amen. You should be revealed. The, the pleasure of, 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 of believing that you will spend eternity with Christ. That's 1 Thessalonians 4. It says, for if we believe that Jesus 
died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus God would bring with him. For this I say unto you, the words of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them to meet them in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I believe that. I believe scripture. You still believe scripture? And a woman say, her woman say, girl, you know how you gossip. Girl, I can't believe she did that. The man say, man, I don't believe he did that. Stop telling people what you can't believe and don't believe, but tell them what you do believe. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that he was born of a virgin in the town of Bethlehem. I believe that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. And she gave and she conceived the God child. I believe that Jesus made the blind to see and the lame to walk, that he upstopped deaf ears that, and, and opened mute mouth. I believe that Jesus walked on water. You believe that? Yeah. I believe that. Let me see. <laughs> Y'all help my eyes here. I, I, I believe that the same God that was with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is with us today. Do you believe that? I believe the same God that stood with Moses at the Red Sea is standing with you today. Do you believe that? I believe that the same God that brought Joshua across on the dry ground can meet you in your dry places. Do you believe that? I believe that he is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I believe that he is the great I am. Amen? I believe that the same God that used a raven to feed the prophet will put food on your table. Do you believe it? I believe that same God that brought water from a rock will refresh and quench your every thirst. Do you believe it? I believe God raised Jesus from the dead. That he would, the same God raised Jesus from the dead would quicken the dead things in your life. Amen? I believe when you call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. I believe if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I believe in God's grace. Amen? I believe in his mercy. I believe in his favor. Amen? I believe in the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, the everlasting Trinity. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. And he hung his head and died. They put him in the bar tomb. I believe that. He stayed there all night Friday night. I believe that. Stayed there all night Saturday night. Somewhere between Saturday night and Sunday morning, he went down to the enemy's camp and took back the keys. I believe that. But early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in hand. I believe that. I believe he's coming back. Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Do you really believe? Hallelujah. I'm telling you guys, we are in a faithless generation right now. Our children are going astray. Thank God for the men that we're going to try to raise the men up. Because the world is beginning to dictate to the church. Yes. But I believe that the scripture says, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. I believe that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing a song for you. I want you to, if you're challenged with unbelief right now, if your faith is wavering up and down, God can fix that. Thank you, Lord.